So, very warm welcome to Dr. Zia Ahmed's YouTube channel. Dear students and audience, we are going to screen record today one poem by Taufiq Rafat, Grave in the Park. The title is very interesting because on the one hand there is grave, on the other hand there is park. Park is a place where mostly we play, feel happy, feel good and it looks beautiful as well. But on the other hand, grave is a place which does not give us that type of happiness as the park gives. Moreover, grave is the end of life. Park is the going on and continuity of life. And mostly uh, we have different concepts of, about the graves. They remind us of our dead ones and they remind us of the sad things which had happened in our life. So in that way, the poem becomes a combination of uh, these two parts of our life. Let us see what does the poet bring before us by reading the poem. For example, the very first part of the poem says, There was a grave in the middle of the park, its brown rectangle, marking it off from the expanse of the ground surrounding it. The nearest tree was a sixer away. So the poet uh, begins with a story, a type of story from the life of a person, the person who is a narrator here and the person who is observer here. The poet says and tells us that he used to see one grave which was situated in the middle of a park and it was brownish type of color and it was a rectangle in shape and it was here and there present. It could be seen that the ground or, or the park type of place surrounded it all and the, there was no tree around it. One of the trees was nearest to it and it was at least six or away. In that way, the poet has told us the position and the situation of the grave. The one thing is about that it was in the middle of the park and second thing is that it was rectangle in shape and it was singularly present in whole of the park and even the trees were not around it. It was not surrounded by that. The trees were away, a very uh, far distance away, at least a sixth distance away. So in this way, we are told about the middleness of uh, this grave. This goes to prove and tell us the meaning that although the park may be full of life, enjoyment of life may be there, happiness of life may be there, but we cannot forget the sadness of ending of our life that one day we would die and we would become the part of the grave. So in the middle of life, the grave is present. In the middle of life, death is present. In the middle of happiness and liveliness of life, the end of life is also present. And it surrounds itself, life surrounds its, it, but it, it does show itself, it does come forward to see that it is definitely there. So life and death have been brought together. The life is stressing itself to the park and the grave is used in order to stress the end of life also. Let us read further and try to connect the situation with the next part. This was the grave of a holy man whom no one remembered, yet somebody cared enough to light a clay lamp every night it lampnage, in the lamp niche black with use. So first let us talk what is the situation told to us. Uh, it is told according to the narrator that the grave was of one holy man. But who was this person? Nobody remembered. And from this situation, we can understand that when in the world we are alive at that time, possibly, we become as great as possible. But death comes and ultimately nobody remembers that even a holy man who spent all the life in being holy is not remembered. So death finishes all. Even our remembrance and memory disappears and only we can guess whose grave it can be. The poet tells that someone was there who used to come possibly every night in order to lit a lamp there, in order to light a lamp there, clay lamp as, as one can say. And that was the proof of the litting of the lamp because on the place where this lamp used to be put, it had become blackened because of the soot, because of the smoke as well, or because of the putting of lamp there. So the only thing of the holy man remains that now somebody is there who puts the light. So it means that some of the people are there who would like to keep the memory of their loved ones alive by visiting these graves or by lighting the lamps there or by doing any activity. 
but even that person is not visible that person is not given any name here only a guess is made that possibly one or two people were there who did this type of job but nobody knew so sense of anonymity has been lent to this grave that the identity of the grave is not there identity of the man possibly being alive was there and the identity of that holy man has disappeared with the grave the only thing which remains is the grave the grave which is the symbol of the thing that the man lived or the human being lived there and then it died it is the start of the life it is the end of the life but the continuity is done by only a few people who would like to spread the light by letting the people know that someone is still caring for this person so it means that life has to end whatever the situation may be the life has to end and however we can make that person's memory alive if we want by lighting the lamp by lighting the lamp it this lamp is symbolic it does not simply mean the the kind of lamp on the grave it also means that if somebody or something has disappeared and we want to keep it alive we can by lighting the lamp of that thing or memory in our mind every day now proceed further for the next part a lot of banners festooned the shrubbery its sides were brick but the top was soft and covered with grass it reminded me of lemon tart i shivered with irreverence now what other things are situated around there may be small shrubs that is small plantation that was present but that small plantation was covered most of the time with the festoons with the kind of uh, decorations and it the sides of this grave were covered with the bricks but but on the top of the brick was softer it was not hardened with the kind of bricks and covered with grass that top was also covered with grass he says that when i looked at the grave i remember the lemon tart in my brain but as soon as i felt that out of disrespect i shivered also so in that way uh, one can see very clearly the sides of that grave on the one hand there are the festoons on the shrubbery or the small plantation and then the bricks have been mentioned definitely the sides of the graves are like that but the top or the center is mostly left uncovered and therefore the grass grows there so one can imagine from here that even after the death of a person certain things come on the sides of the grave when the nature goes on it continues to show itself and and the continuity of itself with the passage of time many plantation many grasses may grow or one can imagine that out of the grave something is growing that may be the case but actually it is something which one must be accepting that although the man has died but the nature is there walt whitman the famous american poet has also pointed out that we die physically but our shapes may change when we die for example he says that when he would die out of his grave the grass would come out and that is why it would make him very happy that he is still present in this world so the world goes on life goes on only the one thing or one person disappears but he may be remembered with the help of his grave or with the help of the things which are present in the grave the festoons show that automatically some clothing some other material has come to land on the shrubs but it may be the festoons also which are put by some people there so the grave is kept alive especially if the thing is that the grave is of a holy man not a common man many people would come to pay their respects and they would definitely attach certain festoons there as well and similarly the next part of the poem said its sides were brick were ridged and broken and unfashionably slim on it were drawn and freshened every day with charcoal or chalk the sets of stumps at which we bowed now another thing is added here the sides of the grave definitely are made up of the bricks and uh, some of the sides have become shriveled they have breathed and uh, they are broken also and they have become thin too but this side of the brick was used by the boys who would play the cricket they would take a charcoal and make the sign of the stumps cricket stumps on the on the side of the grave and then they would play it uh, they would hit the balls by bat and somebody would throw as the cricket game is there so the boys were using this grave or the site of the grave as a part of the play game because they didn't have the proper stumps and they would bring uh, the coal charcoal and with the help of that they would draw the stumps and there with the help of that they would play so this also reminds us about the youthness or youngness of life that when it comes 
it is not remembering whether the situation at the end would be the same as that of grave is there they would simply keep on playing without thinking that the thing could be possibly their end as well so on the on the one hand the grave is a reminder that ultimately the life has to end but on the other hand the park as the title would suggest at the park goes to remind that here the young people the boys would come and they would play also so the life on the one hand will continue to go on the other hand the grave would show that the life is ending also so in that way both the things go side by side and perhaps this is the perhaps this is the purpose of the poet also that life is there it has to go just one change takes place that the one who dies that person disappears but then the grave keeps on reminding that somebody is lying there okay and then the saint i was sure was a giant who swallowed children certainly his grave was the biggest i had seen to look at the top i had to jump madly no oh, the size of the grave definitely is terrifying for a child especially he says that the size of the grave was so big that it appeared as if the the saint was not a common type of person his size was giant like size and therefore he may be eating the children as most of the stories are told to the children in their childhood that somebody was big in size and that person used to eat the children and these stories reflect in the mind of the boy as the narrator he says therefore as soon as he saw the big grave largeness of the grave he was impressed by that and most of the time he would try to run away from that place in a mad way so therefore the fears which are generated out of the stories and the size of the grave also in the mind of the child what kind of impact it creates that also went through and that is told to us by the poet here standing as it was in a large bare patch it dominated the landscape now again the last stanza is connected here by talking about the largeness of the landscape by the largeness of the whole of the grave that it was so bigger in size its sides permitted four matches at once winter afternoons we played there till light lasted so the boys used the sides of the match and many boys came to play there and that is why all four sides of the grave was used in order to draw the stumps there and everybody played like that so in a way it became the center of the activities of the children that the grave had become center of the activities this center is important here because even after the death one person is providing a chance to the people to play with it or to become the part of that so in this way uh, the connection between the life and the death is established here by the poet once again and the life without reminding itself what is going on it goes on till the time of death comes there in the dark i was scared of it sometimes when i forgot a bat or a ball and went back to fetch it i would not go alone but take a friend or preferably two this also takes us back to our own childhood lives that when uh, we were with the company with our friends at that time there was very less of the fear of the lonely places of the graves of the of the graveyards but as soon as one becomes alone that scariness comes there because of the stories that we have been hearing so the poet tells that that or the narrator tells that when sometime he would go there he would find to to get his ball or or, or a bat there alone he was so much feared and he would go fearfully there so he would not go alone there or most of the time he would take one or two friends there so fear of the graves have been pointed out the same fear would continue in the next part of the poem also the poet says we all pretended as loudly as we could it was for the company it was then by then we noticed the oil lamp burning surely some jinn had come in our absence uh, lit it and vanished so same fear same thing continued continues in this part of the poem as well that the boys used to talk loudly when they would go at the time of night or evening there Uh, because they were fearful and in order to remove their fear they would talk with each other loudly and they would see that somebody has lit the lamp and that lamp is burning and according to them they had never seen anybody who would go there and burn the lamp so that is why they thought it was done by a jinn and then uh, the jinn had disappeared and the lamp is still present there so this is also reflective of these stories about the graves the fear that we have about the graves that is there but the fear is removed because of the light of the burning lamp so this is what the poet wants to give the impression that it may be okay that death death brings fear death brings darkness but if we keep on lighting the lamp of the lightness we will be able to see the things in a in a clear light that we will be able to see 
that life is also there, the darkness of death is also there. It is up to us whether we want to keep it alive or we want to remove it. The use of the word jinn goes to point out that most of the time the things we don't know or we don't understand, we would like to put it to the supernatural things and that thing is again repeated here. Children are special because they are told the stories about this. So they would say that something which they don't know is probably done by a jinn. And then comes the next part, coming back home through the 14 fields, the shortcut we had to pass, through a Hindu graveyard or burning guard or whatever it was, abandoned by its look. This part of the poem contrasts the Hindu graveyard with the Muslim graveyard. Hindu graveyard is not a burial, burial place, but a bur burning place, let us say. It is called burning heart. And so when the dead body is brought and people come, it is live with life at that time. But as soon as the people go, the Hindu graveyard becomes barren without anything, without any person present there, without any indication present there as the grave is. On the other hand, the grave was dominantly present. It made itself realize. So it means that the graves are there to make us realize uh, that the thing happened, death came, and the person is still there. Uh, but on the other hand, in, in the Hindu graveyard, even the, that kind of indication is also not present. So sometime life may be remembered in the shape of the grave, in the shape of the lighting of the lamp, but sometime it may not be even remembered because the other creeds, other religion would do the thing in such a way that total disappearance of the memory of a person would take place. So. In that way, it can happen that one may be alive in the shape of the grave, but it may also happen that one may become the part of the whole universe and one may not be in the memory of the people also. Or there may be nothing in order to make us realize that somebody was there. And next, the same portion says, As good Muslims, it was a matter of honor. We should piss on the mounds, unbuttoning our flies with quick silver fingers. We pissed a few drops for the sake of honor and left whistling. It's a kind of tradition or some superstition is talked about where the uh, pissing should be done because it is said that if the piss drops drop on yourself, you will become unholy and un impure. So that is why it is said that on, around the mound, mounds, I mean, there the where the earth has accumulated with the with the sand is present there, one may be urinating so that it may not drop back and it may not uh, impure or it may not pollute the body or the parts of the body. So that is why the poet goes to tell that he would do this kind of thing and they would come back happily. So this is the age, the childhood is the age when one doesn't remember even the things which we have talked about, the grave and death in the last time. So life is to be enjoyed by the people who are young and still they have to face all these things. So that is why everything is going on happy, everything is going on whistling like. So that is the happiness pointed out on the other hand by the poet, the happiness of the children. Pissing the balance in our shorts, then the family moved to another town and that town was ours. For 17 years in its excitement, I forgot the grave. Migration makes the things forgotten. So that is why the same happened in case of narrator as well. That he used to play there in the village, he used to play in the, in the park, he used to witness the grave. But all of a sudden they had to go from one place to the other. 17 years of life made them stay there and ultimately they, uh, they went out and uh, because of the happiness of going to the new place, the narrator says that he forgot the grave. So it means that the movement, the migration may make us forget because we don't see the things as we don't see the grave and we may be forgetting the memory. This is the human quality that the thing which they see, they keep in mind and ultimately they will forget it. So in this way, the connection is going to be lost here. But how the connection would be reestablished because the grave and death is a big reality that is to be seen in the next part of the poem. Still the breakup of a continent brought me back to my own hometown. I was surprised to find it unchanged as soon as I could, I went to the park. So life, movement, migration, and then the hint is given to the breakup of the continent, that is the partition of India, and in that way he says that he had to migrate and come back in the same village. And as soon as he came in the same village, he was to see that everything is unchanged, and definitely the grave must be there in a dilapidated form, but it must be there. So that is why the poet says that after coming back to the village, he went direct to find out where the grave is there, where the park is there. So that's the kind of circle of life that has completed. And ultimately, once again, the life has come back to the same place where from it had gone. There was grass on the fields and a lot more trees. 
The playing area had been shifted north. At first, I could not locate the grave level, I thought, but it was there all right. Changes or the time brings these changes. Because after 17 years, when, no, after the migration, when the poet has come back, the narrator has come back, the narrator can see that grass was there, more grown, more trees were grown, and the development had uh, made such an arrangement that the shifting of uh, playing area was done in the and therefore the grave was less visible because it was not in the center of the playing place. So the poet tries to locate it, thinking perhaps it has been lowered. It was not the case. The it was not the case. The grave was still present. So permanence of uh, death is there. Life may be changing shapes. Life may be changing styles. But the death will be permanently available. And the symbol of death that is going to be grave that is definitely present still. So in the childhood also the grave was there and in the youthful time of the narrator the grave is still there. It has not disappeared though it is changing shapes. The, the center of the death or the center of the park is still in the same way present as it was present in the past uh, few lines. Naval high of embraceable width and three strides long lichen had covered the stump markings in its single devotee had long ago died for the niche was cold. Okay, so in that way, a change is coming up uh, according to the narrator that he would see that uh, very high, uh, you know, plantation has grown around the, the grave and as a result, the stump marks which they may, used to make with the coal and it connects us with the certain past tenses also and reminds us the time of youth and childhood which the, which the children spent while playing around the grave that is being reminded to us but it is not possible now to locate because plantation lichen like has grown and stumps have been covered the only thing which remains still there and that is one came and perhaps burnt the the lamp there that also had died and uh, there is there is no visibility of the same thing the niche where the lamp used to be there it is not in that shape as it used to be at the past time so in this way even that person who used to light the lamp that person has disappeared so everything is to go everything is to finish the reality of death is like that this is what the poet is trying to highlight he says the trees that were tall then are merely so and uncles have dwindled to an amiable height and so and some have vanished we look eagerly for familiar signs are disappointed and mock ourselves for being sentimental this was expected but who can foretell at which childhood site that final illusion our particular mammoth will be laid to rest the ending of the poem brings sadness and philosophical content in it. According to the poet, some of the trees possibly looked taller than at that time when he was a child. Uh, these are taller uh, because the poet, when he was a young person, he looked at the trees which were smaller in size. With the passage of time, some have become bigger and some have, some have become, you know, uh, smaller. And the poet also says about the uncles, the people who he used to call them uncles, uh, they, they also are of now, uh, now present in short number, not in that number as it used to be, because some of them have disappeared. He says that uh, he would like to look at those familiar signs of childhood, but it was difficult for him to find out. And therefore, uh, the poet says that when he looked at these things, he used to mock all these people by saying, that how sentimental we become when we miss certain things of our childhood. He says that we cannot do anything by becoming sentimental because the things have to go like that. That is why the poet says this was expected, but who can foretell at which childhood site the final illusion or particular mammoth will be laid to rest. He says that the things have to happen and nobody knows what kind of center of attraction would become. Who would be there who would die in a bigger size when you are a child and the grave is now done and there again and again the things will be going like that. Somebody may be laid to rest and we may be thinking that perhaps he was a giant, perhaps he was a big jinn or perhaps he was something. Whatever the case may be, that grave type of thing would become the center of the whole thing. So this is what the poem tries to say. The poem is very, very simple, written in simple words, but the philosophy of life and death, how life goes on, how life comes back, how life ends and how then it lives for some time or we keep alive, but ultimately we also forget and the things change. This word is the name of permanence as well as that of the change. The permanence is only that of life, life into death. 
the change is that of life we are born we grow young and ultimately we die and our remains remain there in the world or some symbols remain some people would try to keep the these symbols alive and ultimately even that would disappear and new life will come so uh, death makes the things permanent into some other world and the remembrance of those things may be made with the symbols like grass like the play games or like the things which are done around these graves and some new grave new story of the childhood would be there so in that way life goes on and some life is born and some life disappears we can see that the poem is divided into different parts it's a very long poem uh, parts are comprising most of the time of the lines one may say seven lines uh, it's not seven eight lines rather it's not the kind of stanza formation there's no rhyme scheme as well it's a free verse written in a freestyle modern type of poetry but the message is very clear that we can have grave becomes the symbol here grave is the symbol of death but that grave also is the attachment with life as well and that goes on for some time when we are around and same is the case with the lamp that is the life that is the brightness that is the shine which can emerge out of that that death as well it's a reminder of the grave also but on the other hand it's the reminder of that thing that the light can also be spread or the memories can be made brighter also but then it's a part and parcel of everything children are not aware of the reality of death or the sadness which can it bring so, so that is why they keep on playing ultimately they also become the younger men and then old people they also die so in this way fears of childhood stories have also been pointed out by the writer mostly we have these fears about the graves that are created through the stories which are told to us in our childhood and the changes and the grass and the plants they cover the death and these symbols also disappear that is what the poet is trying to say that ultimately everybody has to go but some grave would become a kind of uh, place of illusion of uh, symbol of attraction of center of keeping our memories alive that is what the poet is trying to bring for us so that's it from me for this day it's a very long poem so the video has also gone very long and but we have to say ultimately goodbye to each other thank you for watching